Well, welcome back to the system on this last day of 2019. This is the last day of our information gathering portion of the Energy Sovereignty Project. Many of you had expressed uh, concerns that this was now was over. No, it's not over. It is just the beginning. Over the next four to six months or so, I'll be releasing a series of short videos that focus in on the individual aspects of what we've learned from the system. Things like calculating our losses, things like examining the uh, overall effectiveness of the, uh, uh, the, the home solar, examining how the uh, system coped with driving an electric vehicle and charging uh, charging that all of these things will be really interesting to look into in greater detail but this video is just me thanking all of you for following along with the project. Uh, a special thanks to uh, CWNE88 from Australia. He gave some uh, great advice and encouragement early on in the system. And then, of course, the uh, help from Lee and Tomas, especially Tomas, in helping us with these comparative studies that are so important with a uh, project such as, uh, uh, such as ours. And with that, let me just wish you all a very happy new year as we move into 2020. Now, we're going to go back over to the studio quickly and discuss the title of the video and why we have been absent over the last couple of months, really. Starting back in September, October, we started noticing that there were a lot of anomalies uh, going on with the system. One of the early complaints that we had about the system was is that it wasn't able to draw power from the grid. And because of that, I felt that, that the system was really hampered in its ability to serve the customer if it wasn't able to do that. And it was very frustrating because then that meant that I couldn't do some of the initial tests that I wanted to do that dealt with losses and that kind of a thing from doing something like charging the system to 100%, watching how many days it would go and then repeating that test and then figuring out at what level of charge would be something that would be useful to the homeowner. But not being able to charge off the grid, that was a, 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 a terrible problem. Well. Over the last couple of months, Tesla's been working behind the scenes and it's been interesting to see the results of, of them implementing their AI. And again, we'll go over to the studio and we'll look at that in greater detail. But uh, what I wanted to mention here was, is that this really did make it impossible for me to release videos and give any kind of meaningful information. The lead in for these videos is Oh, three to five days or so from the time that I actually do one to the time that it usually comes up on the uh, uh, on, on YouTube. This is this video here is the exception. This one's going to be a fairly short video, uh, an introduction to AI. We're going to go ahead and follow this up with some subsequent videos. But I just wanted to let you all know what had happened to us over this last couple of months or so. But every time I would be about to release a video. I would notice that the system had radically changed and that the information that I was about to release was no longer valid. And so it was very frustrating. I'm sure it's been frustrating for you too that all oh, you know here you want to see the close out of the year and all of a sudden the videos stop. But I can't in any good conscience release information that I, that that is already uh, is already out of date. So I thought, oh, it's best just to go ahead and wait, and then we'll go ahead and uh, recap it at the end of the year, and then we'll also have to follow this obviously as we go into 2020 to see uh, how the system is responding. And with that, let's go ahead and head back over to the studio, and we'll take a closer look at exactly what I'm talking about. Well, welcome back to the studio for our closeout for 2019 and a quick recap of everything that's been going on through the last couple of months here. 
I'm not going to make this video too long because we'll be covering all of this later this week in greater detail. But I just wanted to get this video out to remind everybody that we are still working on all of this. Uh, the delay, as I said in the intro, was largely due to the fact that Tesla has been very active in its software changes and it simply wasn't possible to continue to give accurate information. By the time I was ready to release a video, I would do my self-check to verify that everything was the way that uh, the way that I was presenting it and something would have changed. And so then I would contact uh, uh, Tomas or Lee to try and help me out with a little uh, uh, alteration on their end as a bit of a sanity check to try and figure out, you know, if it, what you know what was going on. They weren't able to verify my information. And so then this wound up into this this kind of a loop where it really wasn't possible to produce a a, a video giving any accurate information whatsoever. So we just, I just didn't. And so anyway, here's an example of exactly that kind of a thing that uh, that I'm talking about. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Don't worry if, you know, if this goes by really quickly. None of this is actually accurate anyway. That's just kind of give you an idea of what, what we were struggling with. So by the 13th of this month, I thought I had a handle on what was going on and I was preparing to release my findings to you guys and uh, then allow some of you that have these Powerwall systems to perform some of these tests yourself. So here's a very quick walkthrough of what I did. Very quick, I, uh, I start off with, we had a, a baseline of how the system was when when we arrived. And so here we go. This is just showing, you know, the um, the system. It's This is actually on backup power. It doesn't always produce that little orange border around it, but we are in backup power. It's just one of those times where it didn't show the border. And so the grid power is shut off. Okay, so I then, with the, um, here is showing the settings. I've got the uh, reserve set to zero and the uh, storm watch turned off. And then the moment that I turned the grid power back on, boom, we get this rogue charge again. Now again, this isn't like the uh, Stormwatch charge. This is full-blown five kilowatts per power wall. Boom! Straight to the uh, uh, straight to the system. Jeez. So all right. Well. Th so then uh, um, I tried to uh, manipulate it. I was able to then by uh, turning the uh, reserve from 100% back to 1%, not zero, but 1%, I was actually able to then get the system to stop rogue charging. And so I thought, oh, well, that's great. I'll go ahead and, and let everybody know that, hey, we can now perform some tests. We can actually manually send the system into a rogue charge state and then pull it out. So uh, at this point, I, I, I thought I had uh, um, a pretty good uh, a pretty good handle on what was uh, what was going on well I didn't so again aside from the rogue charging that was going on uh, we also were noticing these little spikes that were going on now all of this really uh, dates back to the first rogue charging incident that we saw back on October 20th. I'll pull these guys up here real quick. This is this is from the uh, uh, from October 20th, and again it shows that that high rate of, of charge uh, that we then uh, terminated. And back to this, we started seeing these little spikes around that time, and I thought, oh, you know, what's going on there? And so then. As time went on, they got worse. The spikes were getting uh, more radical. And so here we have November 28th. And um, so this is a really good day to uh, look at because this is from a day when the system charge never dropped below 50%. So what's all these spikes? We should just be flat, right? Well, what's causing this? So then what we came to the conclusion of is, is that Tesla was putting something in there to handle this switching. That Tesla was actually causing this switching somehow. Here's a good uh, uh, day to look at it again. This is from the 28th uh, and what we'll see here, this is the um, screenshots of both the uh, solar contribution 
and then the uh, uh, switching that was done. This is the, the from the grid switching, and so you can see as you wind up getting these uh, getting these fall offs from uh, from the the uh, cloudy weather as the clouds would roll through, then you were actually drawing and uh, and, and dropping power from the uh, uh, from the grid, even charging a little bit uh, there. You can see uh, even a couple of those spikes where we were actually sending a little bit of power to the grid. Well, so what's happening here? Well, the reason this video again was so delayed was that by the time I did that test on December the 13th, Again, I thought I had it pretty well, well hammered out. I didn't. I contacted Tomas to run a comparative test to see if he was seeing the same thing as I was. He was not able to replicate my results. Well, Tesla had in the background installed this AI that was now in control of the grid power. Now, here is what the system started doing on the 26th, I actually started to pay uh, uh, closer attention. So here's a screenshot, a couple of screenshots from the 26th. So after the setting, uh, after I set the, the system to 30% reserve, because we were expecting thunderstorms to, to come in over the, uh, over the next uh, couple of days, I wanted to put some reserve into the system from solar the, the following day. Now again, the way that it usually works is when you set it up like this, then the system won't obviously charge from the grid, but it'll wait for the next day's solar contribution. When solar starts, then what it'll do is it'll send all of that solar power to the batteries, and then it'll supply all of the home power from the grid. Okay, that works out. Well, again, after setting the system here to 30% reserve, to my surprise, the system was actually trickle charging the batteries from the grid, at 12, 12 in the morning, slightly after midnight. So obviously, I'm very curious now to see what's going to happen when solar starts contributing the next day. Again, what we usually see then is that kind of a crossover where the um, all of the power, say you were say you were contributing uh, um, uh, five kilowatts from the uh, uh, from the solar and your home was obviously using less than five kilowatts so then all of that five kilowatts would be going to the battery and then say the home was drawing two kilowatts and then you'd see the two kilowatt coming from the grid and so it, it left the left the battery out uh, out of the mix entirely but now we see this so you can see here that both the solar and the grid are contributing to the uh, home load and the batteries are charging at 2.1 kilowatts. But but why shouldn't the shouldn't all that power, all 2.6 kilowatts, be going to the uh, uh, to the batteries? Well, nope, because Tesla fixed that problem. So here's another set of images from early morning on the 30th. So here we'll put up uh, both of these at once, so you can kind of see it here, and then I'll tell you what's going on. So uh, these don't represent those kind of momentary switching that, that just kind of happened in the background. We've mentioned those in, in previous video. These actually re represent persistent states uh, that, that were there for at least 10 minutes or so. And again, this one, I, I monitored this, and what you're seeing on the first screen there at 117, it remained this way with 2.2 kilowatts uh, uh, coming from the, uh, from the grid almost next to nothing. Uh, assisting the home and the rest of the power coming from the power wall. But why is it limiting that? I was wondering that and it wasn't changing, right? And so then a little while later, this place you can see is 1.29 a.m., boom, it switched and now all of a sudden we had an additional home load. I, I, I wound up turning, I probably put the uh, 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 put the coffee on or did a microwave or something, but I'm watching it here and then all of a sudden I'm seeing that it's contributing to the battery, not just to the home, but to the battery at one in the morning with no solar contribution. And again, it stayed that way for a time. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, uh, how long in that, in, in that respect. So it was doing this because I had set the reserve to 
When I went back, because again, I wanted to, to verify that what I'm telling you was accurate, that this was actually something the software was doing and not just some kind of switching, right? So I went and I set the reserve to 5%, obviously below that 30% that it's trying to maintain in the middle of the night off of grid power. And what does it do? Boom. This was just before uh, the first contribution of, of solar in the morning. Boom, starts to go completely from, uh, uh, from the batteries. So what's the takeaway from all of this? If you'll remember back when we started the Energy Sovereignty Project, we discussed how eventually the software would take over the system management because it would be more efficient for it to do that, to base how it sets the system up on things like the home's average use over the week and uh, what its average um, uh, solar contribution had been, maybe looking at the previous week or two weeks to kind of, kind of establish a trending to see what, uh, uh, what was going on. Well, that's exactly what's happened. At the time, we were first looking at this, I knew that if the system didn't have the ability to draw from grid power, that there would be no way that it would be able to do this. And so obviously Tessa fixed that, but while it's still not possible, as far as I know, to manually set the system to fully charge off of, uh, off of grid power, it's also not necessary to do so. Under the current system, if you are below a set threshold of your reserve, whether it's 30%, 20%, 50%, if the system is below that point, it will sip from the grid, even at night, to try and reach and maintain that set point and then optimize it over the course of, of the, the next several days. And uh, even with no solar contribution at all, it still sips from the grid, it still tries to get it up slowly to that, uh, uh, that reserve point. And so, though this is just a preliminary video to let you know that Tesla has seems to have solved the grid charging issue, certainly to my satisfaction, I really don't think that we can ask anything more from the, the system as much as we would all love to be able to manually just shoot a charge to the, uh, uh, to the uh, batteries whenever we wanted to, the reality is, is that for the average consumer this works just fine and it also allows the grid not to be hammered. Because if you can imagine, say everybody had the ability to go ahead and go in and turn the, uh, um, uh, turn the, the system to fully charge. Well, you're expecting cloud cover or rainy days or whatever, you and everybody else in your neighborhood does that and that grid would go absolutely berserk because everybody with a large system would then be charging at 20 or 30 kilowatts. That's not healthy. And so uh, with that, I'll leave the video here. More to follow, obviously, uh, as we go along, but I just wanted to wish you all a very happy new year and best wishes for 2020. And this isn't the end of the Energy Sovereignty Project, this is only the beginning.